in this recording, we will talk about various poverty ratios, poverty measures. We will start with defining what is headcount, what is headcount ratio, what is poverty gap ratio, and what is income gap ratio. We will talk about their advantages and disadvantages. This may be a little useful to you. So let's have a look at this. So first of all, what is a poverty line? We have seen this in the last recording too, that poverty line is nothing but the expenditure threshold. So if you are earning below this, you are poor. Or if you are spending below this expenditure threshold, you are deemed to be poor. Otherwise, you are non -poor. So, which is minimally necessary for the adequate participation in economic life. So, adequate participation would mean that you should have basic amenities of food, shelter, and clothing. Now, let's talk about a few uh, terminologies here. So, why is your income? P is the poverty line. And M is the mean income. M is the mean income. Right. So one way is that you count. So you have the poverty line with you. So one way is that you count the number of people who are below this poverty line. So that is what the head count is. Right. Count the number of people. Head count is. The number of people below the poverty line. Below the poverty line. Right. Right. But what we may be in interested is in the relative incidence of the poverty, right? So what we do is that we want to find out how much of, uh, I mean, uh, what proportion of people out of the total population are below the poverty line. Right? So we might be interested in <clears throat> this thing. Head count as a fraction of population. as a fraction head count is a fraction of population so what is going to be this is just the head count ratio head count ratio is number of people below poverty line upon total population n number of people below poverty line upon total population n so one of the main uh, advantage is that uh, you don't need uh, so much of data for this, right? You just need to know what is the poverty line. You need to know what the expenditure levels of the people are. So if they're spending less, uh, that is good enough to go. So they don't place They don't place great strains the available data on the available data, right? But there are a few disadvantages also. There are few disadvantages also. So it fails to capture the extent to which the individual uh, expenditure is going to fall below the poverty line. Matlab, aap, uh, in case if the poverty line is 32 rupees per day, 32 rupees per day. So everyone who is falling below the poverty line, below that, those will be counted as poor. So someone who is uh, having 31 rupees as expenditure, that is also poor. Someone who is having one rupee as an expenditure, that is also, uh, that person is also poor. 
but there is a difference in the relative intensity of these people being poor, right? Somebody who's spending just one rupee a day, somebody who's spending 31 rupees a day. So it fails to capture. The extent. To which. Individuals income or expenditure falls below the poverty line. Falls below the poverty line, right? Then you have poverty gap ratio. So poverty gap ratio is defined as the ratio of average expenditure needed to get all the people to the poor, to the poverty line, right? Divided by the mean income. So um, if you want to actually talk about the extent of the poverty, relative extent of the poverty, this is the better ratio to use, poverty gap ratio. So poverty gap ratio kya hoga? Like this. So let me just write the definition first and then I'll tell you. So poverty gap ratio is the ratio it is the ratio of the average income or extra consumption needed to get all poor people needed to get all poor people poverty line divided by the meaning divided by the mean income of the society Ab kya is baat ka? so there are so there might be one person who is earning just who is spending just one rupee a day, and the poverty line is thirty two rupees a day. So you need to take him to the poverty line. So you need thirty one rupees more for that. There is another person who is earning who is spending twenty eight rupees a day, but poverty line is thirty two rupees. So you have to take that twenty eight rupees person to thirty two rupees divided by the mean income or the mean consumption of the society, right? Uh, so the why you are dividing this by mean income is because you want to get an idea that how large the gap is relative to all the resources which are available to the society on an average, right? Uh, to close this particular gap, to gap between what gap between the income which I being poor I have and the poverty line, right? So the uh, formula is this. Poverty gap ratio is summation of if my income is less than poverty line, I will add all those incomes divided by mean income. Mean income is this into M. 
n into m. So mean income of one person into the total people in the society. Huh. So why you are dividing by <clears throat> the average is because it is giving an idea of how large the gap is relative to the resources which could be used to close this particular gap. Hmm? That is one thing. Other, there are advantages also. And uh, this is, uh, the, this, this is, there is, there are disadvantages also. So one of the advantage is it is a measure of resources to eradicate the poverty. It measures, it is a measure, I said it, it is measure of resources to eradicate poverty to eradicate poverty right okay but there are problems also so supposedly if there is a very unequal society and there are large number of poor. There are large number of poor, but one person is very rich. It is a very unequal society. There are huge number of poor, but there is few very rich people there. So in that case, mean income is going to be high because outlier hoga na. Jaise maan lije, aise income apki two plus two plus two plus uh, what I mean, let's say. 102, right? So you divide this by 4. What will you be getting? 102 plus 6 is 108 by 4. This is what you will have. And uh, this is going to be your 27. So everyone earning 27 as the mean income, that is not the case because the person who is earning just 2, you can't say he's earning 27. And why are you getting such a high mean income? Because few people have very large income. So mean income is still large. So the PGR is small. Right? So please write. In a very unequal society, In a, very, in a very unequal society, there are large number poor people. But mean income is still large. So you get the poverty gap ratio small and you get very good. I mean, you feel very elated. Ah, poverty gap ratio is small. But that is, I mean, such small poverty gap ratio is of no use to you. Why? Because only very few people have any income there. And large number of people are very poor. Right? So that is not the thing. So, and then you have something which is called the income gap ratio, right? Income gap ratio. So, income gap ratio is that you divide the shortfall by the total income which is required to bring all the poor people to the poverty level, right? So, what income gap ratio is doing, it is measuring the acuteness of poverty, right? It measures the poverty relative to the total income which is required to bring all the poor people to the poverty line so that the poverty goes away, right? So when I say um, you're bringing poor people to the poverty line, what I actually mean is that um, uh, means their poverty goes away. If poverty line ke upar hai, uske paas jayenge, then your poverty goes away, right? So it measures
the acuteness poverty because it measures poverty relative total income needed that uh, to make that poverty go away right so what happens in case of uh, income gap ratio less than p so if individual wise income is less than the poverty line you find out the gap but here instead of dividing it by the mean income what you are doing is you are dividing it by P into HC, right? So HC is what? The number of poor people, right? And uh, P is what? Poverty line. So you divide it by this thing. Okay. And then you have uh, the thing which is called, what is the drawback of using these headcount and poverty gap ratio, right? That both of these, these measures, they ignore the or uh, this relative deprivation even among poor because even among poor they can be really poor and they can be poor right they can be very very poor people and they can be poor people both these measures Both these measures ignore the relative deprivation. the poor right uh, so basically i mean um, uh, inequality among the poor you can say so these measures are not not talking about the relative deprivation among them. so i hope this was of some use to you and you've been able to make better notes read reading also and try to improve upon these notes right? thank you very